On today's episode, we are going to take a look at three businesses. The first two we're going to take a look at are ones that are reporting earnings this week. And the third one is one that was actually shown to me by someone in the comments. So feel free to always let me know what companies you guys want me to take a look at. And the first two that are reporting earnings that we're going to take a look at is Micron and FedEx. And you might be like, Jose, I, I don't really have a position on Micron and FedEx. Why do I really care about this episode? And this to me, I, I think the overall point of today's episode is to talk about even though you don't if you don't have a position in certain companies, it is still smart to take a look at some of the ones reporting earnings at the beginning, because it might give you an overall an overall view of how the market is doing. For example, Micron and FedEx are ones that are doing earnings before before earn kind of before earning seasons really start so they can give us kind of an overview of what's happening i i know i used micron early february when they re, late february when they reported when they reported their earnings and they kind of mentioned what kind of sectors are are kind of lagging right now due to covid 19 and what kind of sectors were leading so right now i i that's the main reason I, i'd like to take a look at both these companies because I, I feel like i can learn a lot with how the market is moving so let's get started So like I said, the first one we are taking a look at is Micron Technology, and that's ticker MU for anybody listening to the podcast. Um, right now, I want to take a look at price performance for MU, and if you guys have, have been watching the channel, you guys know I like to take a look at February 20th, when it's pretty much before the market started tanking. So before the market started tanking, Micron Technology was around $60, so even at, at today's stock price, this company is down about 18%, and that's actually pretty crazy. Um, first, let me also discuss what Micron Technology is, and this is another one of those that is right in my alley. I am an electrical engineer, so this is a technology company that deals with form of computer memory and some form of data storage. So you might be like, Jose, what do I, what does any company really need computer memory or data storage? I'm not going to go in, out there and buy a computer. And um, this is computer memory. Data storage is something that's used in every form of technology out there from your phone, from your car, cloud companies. So if you guys are, are really big into cloud companies, the cloud servers, these cloud servers aren't just things out in the air, right? They're actual cloud servers with, with high powered computers running all this data and all that data needs needs memory so that's where micron comes in it's there's a few other companies that deal with micron that that are competitors to micron samsung memory i would consider one um stx I, seagate i think one is another one that would be considered but i do consider micron one of the leaders in this market and especially right now when we see a lot of a lot of clouding server companies like Microsoft, Facebook, Amazon expanding their overall servers. Um, companies like Micron Technologies are, are the ones providing the pieces for those servers. And so that's why I really want to look at Micron Technologies earning. Um, I remember on their last on their last earnings call, which was a, a few weeks before all the big guys actually reported earnings, they mentioned that they did see a huge spike in the clouding compute in the clouding world they saw a huge spike in in working from home items they saw a huge decline in automobile and they saw a decline in equipment in like phones and and type of hardware that wasn't really necessary for for working from home situations so this is the information that i, I like to get from micron technology so with this upcoming earning i'm definitely going to keep an eye out to see how clouding improvement has gone or, or I, I know i just actually did a, a video on google and facebook and google just mentioned that they continued they, they just spent about two billion dollars to increase their clouding servers in Poland. So just like th stuff like that is gonna help improve this company's uh, Micron's technologies revenue in the upcoming years. So for me, it's still pretty insane to see it actually down about 18%. Um, so let's actually take a look at some of the recent news that Micron technology has had. Um, the first thing is in on May 27th, they've actually increased, they boosted their guidance. And that was one of the reasons if we take a look at their stock price, May 27th, they saw a huge, 
a huge jump in price here they see it went up to 49 and throughout this process it's actually gone up to 53 dollars and 72 cents in june 5th but even since then it has pulled back about 10 percent so they did increase their guidance like i mentioned and that's always an amazing thing um to to see in a company they their guidance for this quarter is expected to be 5.2 billion or 5.4 and what they originally had was 4.6 billion to 5.2 billion so we can see now they expect that their previous high guidance is now their lowest guidance for this quarter um, and we can see originally the, this company was expected to make about 4.9 and that's what analysts had, ex were expecting for Micron. But as time progresses and they, as more information gets gets available to, to analysts, I think they did improve the, the amount this company was expected to make to about 5.3 billion. Um, I don't actually have the number here. But again things are looking good the only bad thing i want to say about micron technology is let's say when all these server stuff stop slowing start slowing down and this is a, one thing a lot of analysts are worried about once this slowdown happens how would that affect micron's micron's earnings and this is one reason a lot of people don't like semiconductor companies because they say they're very cyclical and the way they are is let's say all these comp all, all these businesses that are trying to improve their clouding world right now what they end up doing is they end up purchasing a lot of material at first and you just see this huge boost in memory for example or in semiconductor chips and all types of semiconductor companies you see this huge boost of orders and eventually the the customers are like wait we ordered a little bit too much so for the next year the next two years we're, we, we're going to slow down our orders because we already have enough enough information and then what ends up happening is after those two years the technology has changed dramatically that hey okay let's restart and we're gonna buy a, a boatload again and then the process continues and that's what you usually see here in, in in the semiconductor industry and i understand there's a lot of investors that don't that don't invest in this for those reasons but for me like i said i'm an electrical engineer technology semiconductors are my preference because even though that's that cyclical happens over time it's new technology is being made new chips are being made new memory the the speed of the memory is being made so even though they yes there might be a boost up and there might be a a, a time of lowness which drives the stock price down most of the time you see the stock price is just it, it it continues to go in that uptrend so i am very bullish in all of these guys in the semiconductor and that's why i do enjoy listening to micron's earnings report besides being a shareholder so like again again even if you don't have a position in micron technology i do want to say there is a lot of information in those earnings so if you guys actually want me to take a look at their earnings feel free to let me know in the comments and before we go any further guys don't forget to hit the subscribe button the thumbs up and the bell it helps the small channel out so much and i truly truly appreciate all the support i'm getting also if you guys ever want to get in contact with me feel free to just post on the comments on youtube i'm very very responsive also i am very active on twitter and i do have a discord channel which is free to anybody that wants to join i'm not here charging anything but remember i am not a professional and all of these are just my opinions based on my experience of of seven years in the market so let me just now that i've mentioned why i want to take a look at them uh, i also just want to give a quick if, if people are invested in micron i just want to share a few information that i i found pretty interesting so micron just had an investor's presentation and there was a lot of cool information but the f one i thought was the most important was um this ability of of micron and how they're improving how improving their overall competitiveness and their agility and quality of their products for example, in physical year of 18, um, Micron creates pretty much three types of memories. They make DRAM, NAND, and SSD. So again, if, if you're not tech, if you're not big into tech, that doesn't mean much, but let's just say they have three products. Oh, even though they are memory, they, they do different things. So within these three products in the physical year of 18, DRAM was only able to be created in China. NAND was only created and like worked on in Singapore and Malaysia. And SSDs were only done in Singapore. 
now coming into fiscal year 20 they have increased the amount of places where they're working on their in on their items right so this increases increases testing increasing increases productivity and just the overall quality of the product for example DRAM, which was only in china is now in china malaysia and taiwan NAND, which was only in Singapore and Malaysia, is now in Singapore, Malaysia, and Taiwan. And solid-state drives, which were only in Singapore, are now in Singapore and Malaysia. And this, to me, is actually pretty impressive because it helps the company continue to develop, right? Once you have more places working on something, have more minds working, have more quality check, have more testing, it just overall improves the speed of things. And they actually show um, some, of the, some of the results from this they do see faster time to revenue they have enhanced profitability and they have now increased their balance sheets due to this so for example back then if a customer would require an item that goes to testing right now with the new products compared to 2018 it has reduced the the amount of 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 product testing by 30 percent in just a matter of two years and obviously just by ha being the first mover and having the ability to move your product into the market a lot quicker can be a really a big game changer for a business their balance sheet microns technologies balance sheet is actually one of my favorite it's not one of my favorites but it's one i consider really good and you can see how this company has changed throughout the years in the in the fourth quarter of 2016 this company had about negative five billion dollars in net cash now this company is sitting at over 2.7 billion dollars of net cash so net cash is when you have your cash and you subtract it with this debt so now this this business now micron technology has more cash than it does debt, which is always a great thing and they are investing in capex like we saw to improve their overall aspect of their business the second company we're going to take a look at is fedex and fedex compared to february 20th is also down like micron technology is down about 21 percent again now this is one that i actually understand why it would be down for some time right especially with the covid 19 I, I, it has probably put a damper in certain parts uh, of business but actually now that i think about e-commerce has actually been doing pretty big right now all these e-commerce companies have increased their sales have increased revenue the amount portion that they have collected compared to retail sales ha has been dramatic and it's been growth that has not been seen that they saw in a few months that they thought would have taken years to accomplish so for me with that type of e-commerce business coming in i would have expected fedex to actually also be doing a lot better but i'm pretty sure there's other types of businesses maybe agriculture um that have seen a decrease international sales probably has all international shipping has probably also seen a decrease right now with a lot of countries shut down still or just limiting the amount of produce coming in from other countries uh, i would say that have, may have seen may have had a huge effect on fedex so that's another reason why i like taking a look at fedex earnings right it helps us understand what type of movement is going on around the market and they kind of actually break you don't have to be super smart to take a look at their earnings you just take a look at their presentations and see hey oh okay we're seeing an improvement in this type of market and now you can think of that market with something related to your to, to some of your investments so also if you guys want me to do uh want me to take a look at their earnings feel free to post on the comments and let me go jose take a look at micron earnings when they report on monday i'm pretty sure they report on monday um yeah micron is this morning after close and fedex is tuesday after close wednesday and thursday we don't really see any companies that i, I i'm very i, I would i'm excited about um maybe some people might want to see general meals on wednesday but i don't really want to talk about cereal and food um right now and and again if you are into fedex a few few recent uh, articles that have just re been released for fedex on june 3rd fedex does add a new delivery fee to ease the coronavirus strain so right now they are adding a surcharge to any customers who send more than forty thousand packages per week so amazon is probably one of those and if they're seeing a huge increase in their average volume per week so by 120 percent they start adding 0.30 cents of surcharge per all packages so i do think companies like amazon are taking a big hit maybe walmart and other ones that now more people are doing online payment online shopping 
this online transfer of, of goods of shipping uh fedex is trying to to grab some of that money as well because it does it, 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 they do want to collect more money so i think that was actually a pretty smart move and fedex is not the only one ups actually was the first one to do this uh, and then they started uh so they started this again both of them are doing it in one way it's not exactly a hundred percent the same way that ups is doing it but it's just one thing to mention of what of what fedex is doing so yeah fedex is a company fedex is a business i'm not too excited for their earnings just because it's, it's not a market i am i am completely bullish on or one that i'm interested in and again just because i'm not interested in the market does not mean that this market is not one that will continue to do well i'm just more selective in the type of companies i take a look at but again fedex earnings is, is something that even though i don't have a position in i am going to take a listen to or at least read their their presentation notes to try to understand where the overall market is at and i did mention that my last my last business was going to be one that was actually presented to me by by a comment and this one actually got my attention there there have been a lot that recently have gotten my attention and i'm gonna take a video i probably at the end of each video probably just take a quick look at them and see if investors if, if other investors want me to do a more in-depth in them the first this one that i'm doing today is ticker at four f-o-u-r um and it's called shift for payment inc this this actually just went ipo i i think in Ju early june was the first time they started trading and the ipo price was 23 dollars a share but right now we're sitting at 37 dollars uh, right now it, it did peak in friday june 19th at about 41 dollars and 75 cents the reason i'm doing this video is because in the comments they mentioned that this is a business that can actually be a competitor to square and actually that that actually caught caught my attention so i went to the best way to find out anything about an inf uh, about a business is pretty much just go to their website so i went to shift for payment um online and they kind of talk about their industry and what they do if you go about us they actually have a quick video that shows what they do they talk about their history uh, i'm pretty sure here uh, they talk about their customers their brands their products their software actually it's more on their main website um so like i like they they mentioned it is honestly a competitor to square it's more of a point of sale business um which allows them to use different type of payments and like one thing uh, one thing that I'm, I'm gonna take a look at but they do have some stuff that are different from from square one thing that i thought was pretty cool is let's say you are a restaurant and you want to do contactless payments when you print out a receipt they print out a receipt and it can it actually comes out with a qr code and now you can just use your phone to use that qr code to take a look at the payment and now everything all the bill is online on your phone and you can pay via apple pay google pay all the other types of payments that are available and i thought that was actually a pretty cool concept they also have like contactless payment devices online ordering so i i do agree that they are a competitor to to square and one thing is i i thought this was a a, a new business so i i wouldn't i was looking at what type of of customers they had and they actually have some big name customers one thing is they they pride themselves right now of being the best for the for the hospitality type business so hospitals uh not hospitals sorry restaurant not mm, hotels motels um and and things with resorts and industries in those so they have customers like caesars hyatt four seasons um red roof stations the hiltons and many many more so it's not like they're brand new um it's just brand new to the ipo system and they're integrated with different types of, of other softwares for with oracle with saber so it, it it's a company that's actually really out there so i, I was really interested in what they did um they do talk about they're being used by big restaurant business so if you go if you look at them right if you go have ever gone to a restaurant you've most likely seen one of these of these screen managers restaurant manager type screens where you can pretty much do the whatever a table orders and and they have really big customers here they have for example denny's kfc dq and more i'm pretty let's take a look at what other type of customers i think they had like wendy's too let's take a look and see what kind of customers i want to just take a look at customers 
again, this is one that you guys can 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 go on their website and, and learn more about. Um, here they have, uh, let's see, I know they mentioned Outback Steakhouse, Bonefish, Uno, um, Restaurant Managers, they have Arby's, Auntie Ann's, Little Caesars, Baja Fresh. So you can see they are, they're really big within this industry. And I didn't know there were, uh, obviously, I mean, I should have guessed there were other companies that did the same thing. Um, but they have thousands and thousands of customers, hundreds and thousands of customers. So they actually just went IPO. The reason, the the downside of them just going IPO means that there's not a lot of information really organized. So if you want, if for me taking a look at them, it, it, it's actually all over the place. Um, but again, if you guys want me to take a bit more look at them, feel free to let me know on the comments. One thing I did found pretty interesting is that their CEO is still their founder. And I am very bullish in businesses that are still being ran by the person who created it. And also, if that person owns a huge stake in the business, and they actually do, they own about 11% of four which again it's one of those bullish sentiments to know that the person still has skin in the game and right here shift four we can take a look at their most recent earnings they reported revenue of about 200 million dollars for the first quarter with a net loss of 5.2 million um so they're still losing company but we can see this is a growth company because same time last year they had a revenue of 155 million um uh, a year ago so that's a growth of i want to say about 20 percent revenue growth maybe a little bit higher than 20 percent revenue growth and it also last year they lost about 13.5 million this year they only lost 5.2 this quarter so we're seeing an improvement in revenue growth and we're also seeing an improvement in in their margins so that's that's really good things to see that's something bullish to see for for four one thing that I did not like, I, I don't really mind them not making money because as a growth company, this is something if you guys have been watching my channel that we see pretty often where the company is still growing rapidly. And even though they might not be profitable at the time, they are still, they're at least improving their margins. But if you guys, like I said, if you guys have been watching, I, I want a growth company to have a very, very strong balance sheet because they're not making money right now. So I want them to have enough cash and stuff to be actually able to survive. And I took a look at their total debt and the amount of debt that they have compared to cash is not something I, I was really happy to, to see, um, to say the least. For example, I think they only had about $70 million in cash, but they have about $708 billion in total debt. And uh, again, they do say that this IPO that they just they just went through most of the money there is going to be used to pay down their total debt but still this is something that i i, I wasn't too happy to see even though these are long-term debts that are not due in any any time soon it's not something that that like i mentioned not something i i want to see let's actually take a look at their assets i i know so yeah here we see they have 70 million dollars in cash and about 833 million dollars in total liabilities out of that total liability 700 million is in long-term debt or some kind of credit line and it's something i'm not not too happy to see next i just wanted to take a quick look at their valuation right now the current price um this company has a forward price to sales ratio of 3.7 and that's estimating that in 2021 they're expected to make about 414 million dollars in revenue we're still seeing that huge growth in revenue for, for this business and like i said this is a competitor to square and one thing to know there's only one analyst right now reviewing this business so there's not too many eyes on them square on the other hand has about 30 analysts and the forward price to sales ratio for square right now is 7.03 so obviously if we just take a look at price to sales valuation it does seem like four is a lot cheaper it's probably it's it's about half the price of square but remember when you're when you're looking at them you're buying two different companies square has already um is already profitable at the time for 2020 they are expected to make money where four is not square has a way better balance sheet than four so it's just reasons to understand why a certain business is worth is priced a lot more expensive than another one 
So that's it for today's episode, guys. I hope you guys enjoy it. Let me know if you guys want me to take a look at any of them later on this week. Like I mentioned, Micron is doing earnings Monday. FedEx is doing it on Tuesday. And four is just one that I wanted to take a quick overview. But if you want to learn more, feel free to let me know in the comments. It is a pretty interesting, a pretty interesting business. And they do have strong market share, especially in the in the hospitality type market. But at the same time, I'm just not a huge fan of that of that balance sheet. And unfortunately for me, the information out there is too unorganized that it, it would take me some time to actually really do an in-depth in them. So take care, guys. Have a good night and see you next time.